Hi, I am Laura Brody, and this is Robin Heller. Thank you very much for joining me. She's agreed to become a willing victim slash model for duct tape mannequins. Uh, here's the thing. You can't really effectively duct tape your own back. It's super hard. So it's really helpful if you do this with another person, and then both of you get your own custom form that's might just fit to you. You'll need duct tape, maybe a couple of rolls, a little bit of plastic or some kind of thing to uh, fill in the neck area. You want to make sure that your model is got something on that's the sacrificial t-shirt. Um, a bra kind of thing is if you are a person who uses them, it's nice because that'll actually provide some uplift and be built into it. So something you're willing to get rid of because this is going to go into the duct tape and stay. But also you want to make sure if you turn these to get little hairs out the way because that, if you ever had your hair pulled out with tape, it's no fun. It's a cling wrap and wrapping it about the neck, which will also help with any of the stray hairs and stuff. This is going to go into the tape and um, not cause any problems, but is that comfortable? Yeah. Cool. Um, also, you know, try to keep the temperature reasonable so that people aren't getting too hot, which is really unpleasant, or too cold, which is also unpleasant. Anything you can do to make it nicer for your person, because they're going to be taping you later. <laughs> so you can take little pieces at first. First, tape down the plastic. The classic way, by the way, for taking your duct tape off is this. This is not always the most hygienic method, <laughs> so you can use scissors. First, I'm just taping down this plastic. You want to get somebody that you trust, by the way. Um, because they are going to have sharp, pointy things right next to your neck and other gentle places in your body that you might not want to hurt. Little things. Here is just the start. But you can kind of see where we're going. Now I've just taped down just enough of this plastic so it will stay put and hopefully kept all of her hair out the way. And now, I'm just going to start laying it in in areas. You want to do it as smoothly as you can, but don't get too worried about it, right? You also don't need to do huge chunks. It's better to do smaller pieces and then do it more frequently than it is to do one, because tape sticks so much better to itself than it does to almost anything else. So having had that problem, that's not as much fun. And that will add a lot of time and frustration to your process that maybe you just don't want. What I like to do is go from side to side. Excuse me, while I cross in front of the camera. <laughs> if you have a willing person, perhaps she can, oh yeah, or he can, or they can. Hold, and you can take off tape. Become a human tape dispenser. Nice. Okay. Sometimes that's effective, sometimes it's not. <laughs> but, you can see we're filling it on here nicely. Yeah, that'll work better. to get that as smoothly as we can. There we go. I love your neck scissors. The neck scissors actually work really well. I like them, but I do have a lot of things with a tiny hole right over about my belly button where they stick. But, you know, all's fair in love and scissors or something.
You want at least a couple of layers of duct tape on everything, by the way. Usually about four or five, just something for a little bit of stability. Because tape by itself is kind of thin. You know, it only does so much. There we go. Turn these. And then, if you've got broader, flatter areas, you can take a slightly bigger piece. Um, I like to do a crisscross to sort of build up my basics. And then, going from there, as you can see, I'm doing a little fill-in. To fill in the body. If you get very excitable, you can always use different colors of duct tape. But I start with a plain one, and then, you know, for your outer layer, you can do something festive. I don't know, it comes in all the colors now. So you could do polka dots, actual ducks, those camouflage ones, like really just about anything you could possibly want. Um, this particular variety is 3M, and it's mostly used by contractors, but you can use any. It doesn't really matter. The idea of this is not that it be the best of all possible tapes, but one that is actually forming to the body pretty well. So I added a couple more strips right across the back. You can actually start from there and then, excuse me, I can have you raise it. Okay. Cross the back. Turning. 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 Ta-da. We're starting to shape the hourglass. When you get into the bus position, it's the same idea, by the way. Um, does anyone else remember the cross your heart bra? Yeah. This is what this is. So ideally, part of the idea with the bra in here is that if you are for people with the bosoms, you're actually trying to support them, but you can go across and around. So, I actually did one on one side right here and through here. I'm going to do a support for creating a little duct tape across your hair. Yeah. And then as you go around, the same idea of what I was doing on the back, but instead of going straight across, we're going over a curve. Fill in. Depending on curves, depending on shapes, because everybody's got different ones, you might need to use smaller or bigger pieces. Again, make sure that your partner is okay with you touching them like this, because this is part of the thing, that, that you can't do this without touching people. But you are only touching them with duct tape, so maybe that's okay. I don't know. Are you okay with this? I'm totally fine. Okay, cool. Uh, Robin and I go way back. We <laughs> worked together in a bunch of different theater things, but she's also been um, my muse in several different modeling things. She has done that for an early one where I was draping her with staple draping. Yep. Yeah. And she's very graciously decided to become part of this once more. For the sake of this video, I'm only doing a couple of layers rather than the three or four that I would do if I'm going to do a much more durable one. Excuse me. Next up. <laughs> Same deal. Second side. You can go in underneath and smooth with each piece. I was just saying to Robin earlier that sometimes I've, I've gotten a little too excitable with doing this and have been pulling out the tape too aggressively and have been, you know, giving myself some hand trouble later. So don't, you don't need to go too fast. Just make sure that you're, you know, your model is comfortable. Do you need some tea? I'm good, thank you. All right, little things. It's always nice to work with your person like they're a person. I've been running into that. I do fittings a lot professionally. 
sometimes means you're drawing a lot of stuff on people. Remember that people are people. Don't actually pin them. You know, give them breaks if you're going to be doing this for a really long time. See if they need to go to the bathroom. Little things like that. It's just much nicer that way. It's a good rule for life. I think that's just a general rule, right? What do you want? You need bathroom breaks. You need to be hydrated. You need to be able to get out and like, I don't know, move your legs yeah. sometimes. Treat people like people. That's a good rule. Right? Good general. See, all of a sudden now, we've got her as warrior woman. It's pretty awesome. Off camera, I just did a second layer of all of this because you saw me do the first one. But here, we're going to get the underarm. And it's very nice, by the way, to re allow the arm to rest upon you because holding your arm out like this for a long time hurts. <laughs> so, little things. I was saying to Robin, um, there are a lot of different ways that you can make a dress form that fits you. But this is actually a really nice one, even though duct tape has its problems. But, like, padding of a dress form so that it actually fits your size is a little tricky unless you're used to it. So it's not just getting the right measurements, it's getting them where you want them to be. Now, like, when I worked on Jupiter's Legacy, um, we had the superhero thing. So they did 3D body scans of all the actors because they couldn't be there. They were in Canada, we're in California. That's expensive. You're not going to get that for most things. So this is our own 3D body scan. It's very nice. I, you know, as much as I would love to have a Marvel budget on all the things that I do, I don't. I'm sure everybody would love a Marvel budget. But maybe not the time frame. The hours are brutal. Let me just tell you what. There. We have one side. So I've gone up into the armpit. We can go and do a bit more later. See? Lovely. Uh -huh. And then the other side. Thank you. There you go. Oh no, you. Oh no, you. Um, and again, if you get little crunchy edges off the tape, that's okay. You can always cover this up. Um, one of the things that I will usually do when you're finishing it off is do a final layer of duct tape, which can be done on or off the human body, and then try to do it smoothly. After that, I will frequently cover it with something else, usually something like a t-shirt, because pinning into duct tape sucks, and your, um, your pins will get gummy and horrible, and it will not be fun. It's also not bad to put on an extra layer. Um, one of the things that happens is it does compress the body just a little bit. And you always want to add a little of what we call wearing ease, right? You don't want something that's actually skin tight most of the time. You want something that's a little bit less fitted because in ordinary every day, you want to breathe and have lunch and, you know, stuff like that. It's just a much more pleasant idea. All right, and now you can start going down to the hips. Um, for this one, again, you can do sort of a cross your heart kind of approach. This is also the nice thing that you don't get in a standard dress form. Most of them don't have butts at all. Like, I'm not really sure what happens, but they're like smooth, flat. Um, and they don't curve in or curve out where most people do. They're also, um, they do have adjustable ones, but adjustable ones have the problem of that weird little space in between them, which unless you cover them and fill those in, it's kind of hard to, to do your work over. The benefit of having something that is exactly you is that you can say, test fit your clothing on it. If things need to be altered and adjusted, it's a lot easier to do it on a form than it is to do it on your own personal body. You can, but it's hard. And pinning your own back is really uncomfortable. <laughs> Switching to the other side. The 
This is also really good if your body, for example, is not a standard dress form size, which is true of really everyone. But I've done a lot of work with people of a wide variety of, you know, anywhere on the gender rainbow and everywhere on the size rainbow and everywhere on the shape rainbow. So each time you do that, you try to get a form, if you're in a well-equipped costume house, uh, that is closest to the person, and you almost always have to pat it. It's not going to actually be the shape of the body that you need, because it's a human, <laughs> not a dress form. So that's just how we roll as people. Um, this is... This is a lot more accurate to a human, which is nice. Switching back, and then I'm going to have her turn to the front feet. And we'll go do this, and soon she will have her very own suit of duct tape armor. She can go out and face the world. And then sometimes your tape just does this, for reasons. Move on, it'll all be good. You can always use it as stuffing. There you go, right? No need to waste. I'm actually a really big fan, by the way, of doing things in a sustainable way. So, of course, when you're done with this, you're going to need to stuff it. Old pillows from thrift stores are a very good choice. Wash them first and dry them in hot, and that will kill anything that's in them. Please do that. Mm. To everything, really, from the thrift store. It's just a good idea. You don't know what their cleaning policies are. And sometimes they just... You know thrift store smell? It's like Granny's Closet and Swisher Sweets. It's a really odd smell, <laughs> and sometimes really heavy-duty, like, fabric softener. So, mm. I don't know. It's... Maybe not what you want your clothes to smell like. I don't know. Maybe you're into Swisher Sweets. You do you. You do you. <laughs> Far be it from me to judge you. But you still probably want to wash it anyway because uh, I just heard about the bed bug problem about some people with things out of thrift stores. I'm like, oh, but bed bugs can be killed with heat. So, all right, do that. You're feeling like you really don't want that in your house? Take it to a laundromat. Laundromat dryers are hot. That would be super helpful. Look, you can also, you know, if you really wanted to, you could just turn that into your own outfit, which is pretty awesome. Um, the other benefit of doing something like this, by the way, is that it can be adjusted. So, um, not if, but when your body changes. Because, you know, gravity and lunches and all the other things that happen to us in life. You can actually take this in by slicing it down the sides, to the back. Undo the stuffing when you're done. Put it back on you and retape it to fit. Oh, so, like, duct tape is going to lose its glue eventually. It, it just is going to. But you can always refresh it and add another layer. So I did, again, a second layer of hips and a little bit of under bust off camera because again you don't need to see it twice. It's nice sometimes to have a little bit of arm on your form. So since we have a nice short sleeve t-shirt, I'm going to do that. You can do it all the way if you've got a long sleeve shirt as well. But first off, you want to take out any extra and sort of fold it to the side. Can you hold these? Yes. It gets a little easier as you get closer into the end of the roll. You can see this is pretty much an entire roll of duct tape to do this. Um, and again, if you wanted to do um, a finished layer of another color, then you just do like one big one for the base and then one of the smaller ones in whatever color to finish it off and, you know, I don't know, create your own posture training <laughs> or armor because also you can then be you know, a badass warrior in your duct tape. Awesome! So 
So what I'll generally do for this area is get as much as I can and get around the arm, but I'm going to leave the pit because breathing. And um, that's something that I can tape on afterwards. It's not really a problem. Um, because eventually, what I'm going to have to do is cut Robin out of this. Very carefully. <laughs> so in order to cut this, if you've ever cut duct tape, it gums up your scissors something fierce, so you want to use craft scissors, not your nice fabric scissors, not anybody else's nice fabric scissors, where they will hate you <laughs> so much. Um, and a box cutter against somebody's back is not your safest option. Don't do that. So see. Let's see. Can you lift your arm? Eh. Okay. Let's do it just a bit. All right. Let me see if I can get just the faces. Yes, you want to make sure that you can still get out of here. <laughs> Again, you can rest. Rest arm on here. Be kind to your model. They're going to do it to you later. It's nice, much nicer if you're not cruel. Or if you want that, that's different, and usually that costs extra. Dun, dun, dun. We're here all week. <laughs> all right. I'll sometimes not do a full second or third layer on the arms, because I can always do that after. Same deal, second side. Oh, please. Thank you. The noise, if you can tell, it's higher pitch the closer in you get to the edge of the rule. Little things. Little things that entertain me. As you can see, I enjoy this maybe more than my auto, but that's okay. Everybody gets their own little kicks. This harms nobody most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but you too could enjoy the joys of duct tape. It's fun. Um, I have done... <laughs> Little sort of versions of this by making costumes um, in packing tape and plastic wrap and bug uh, hefty bags and bubble wrap. So I used to do outfits for friends of mine. Um, worked at the Colorado Shakespeare Festival, and they had every year a tarp party, which also got called a tarp party because you know why not. And that ended up becoming these sorts of costumes. So we all would get together, and I really liked making the costumes on people. And so soon, that became more of the party than the party was. Because, <laughs> you know, it's like all the cool kids hang out in the kitchen. But making things out of unusual materials is fun for me. All right, again, can you lift? Sort of. Okay. <laughs> If you need to go back in and snip, I'm fearing to just turn you around and leave a little underarm area, that's fine. Do that. It's all good. Drop these. And since I have that much, I'm just going to go forth and use this and get the rest of my tape onto the duct tape form. You can also check around. And see if there are any areas that are looking a little lumpy. Go through. Cover them up. And see if there's anything that might need a little bit more stabilization. Maybe. And check and see if you've got any threads of tape stuck to your person. Because it's nicer to take that off first. Before we have to remove it. Okay, so I went through and did my extra layer on the arms, and now Robin's ready for me to cut open the back. I have a couple of different kinds of shears. These are super big ones, maybe only if we need to get through some really thick layers, but most of them can probably be done with craft shears. These are not ones that are super special to me, so eh, it should be fine. 
If you do end up getting really gummy stuff on your scissors, you can take them off. Uh, Goo Gone works, and so does lighter fluid. So I'm taking my hand and going in between the shirt and my person. And sliding the scissors up. A little bit. By a little bit. By a little bit. It's nice to keep your hand in there. You don't want to accidentally cut your person. Thank you. Considered rude. No one likes that. But also, you can do it slowly, little bit by little bit, and you do not cut either the person or you, which is way better. Oh. Not gonna lie, certain areas, especially over the bra, this is a workout. Voila! Dum dum dum! Voila! Look! One person, another person! In duct tape! It's great. So you can always do this and try it on again if you want to. And this is what I mean if you need to adjust this at any point. Um, of course, in order to use this, you're going to want to stuff it. Woof! Woof! And you want to squish it around and get it back on here. So you can see we squished her in quite a bit. So you can leave a little extra room across the back when you're taping it together to finish. Like, I don't know. What I would usually do is have, if you can hold your hands on your hips. Mm -hmm. You can sort of pull it in. You can measure exactly how much of a gap there is. This is pretty much a good idea to do regardless because the act of taping somebody together can kind of corset people in just a bit. So I would measure like, okay, at the neck, it's one inches apart. Right here, it's two and a half inches apart. If you want to get really specific, measure down. 10 inches down, it's two and a half inches apart. At the waist, it's two inches apart. At the very bottom, it's one inch apart. That way you can make sure that this is gonna work for the person. Let me turn around. Dum, 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 but it's still a lovely duct tape form. To make this more finished, what you'll do is of course take it off the person, retape it in the back, and then you figure out the stuffing and mounting, which is a whole nother process. If you want to get into that more, talk to me because we can do an entire class on it. Thank you.